That's more than double what they used to have. And just two weeks ago, we learned that Citizens Insurance would provide emergency backup funding for other insurance companies whose financial stability ratings are downgraded. ABC Action News in-depth reporter Stasi Almos has been crunching the numbers to figure out where this funding is coming from and if it will be enough to cover a catastrophic storm here in Florida. Just before August, the Office of Insurance Regulation created this sort of backup funding source through citizens to make sure that any property insurance company whose rating was downgraded by Demotech was still in compliance with the federal mortgage loans. But where this funding was coming from has become a concern, especially because citizens just reached a million policies this week. The reinsurance are the policyholders and the taxpayers of the state of Florida. It's a fiscally unstable plan. It's called Florida's Temporary Market Stabilization Arrangement and stands in place of an A or Exceptional Financial Stability Rating by Demotech. In this OIR program, Citizens Insurance assumes responsibility to pay for claims if a storm hits and a company goes bankrupt. The Florida Insurance Guarantee Association will pay claims below $500,000 and citizens will pay anything above. I went to citizens to ask how are able to take on such financial risk. Where is that money coming from? Okay, that's a good question. The way the arrangement is set up um, is that citizens would use um, uh, its surplus, uh, its $6.7 billion surplus to, to back up claims that would be maybe affected by an insolvency. As of August, Citizens has a total of $13.4 billion to cover this program and their 1 million policies. To put that into perspective, if those 1 million customers needed their homes repaired after a storm, Citizen says its risk of loss would be $346 billion. It's very worrying. Even some Citizens uh, officials now have gone on record and indicated it does put us in a more risk area in terms of our exposure. To get a more accurate idea of what a storm might cost, I went through Florida's past price tags to cover major storms, with a large portion going to insurance claims. The biggest storm to hit Florida was Hurricane Andrew in 1992. It cost $26 billion then, but with prices today, it'd be more like $47 billion. In 2004, five storms made landfall. Four of them were hurricanes, totaling more than $40 billion. Then two more hurricanes in 2005, costing an additional $20 billion. And more recently, Hurricane Irma in 2017, 50 billion and Michael in 2018 almost 19 billion. The issue comes in is if we have, you know, a, a storm season where one to three storms hit the state of Florida pretty well and it wipes out all of citizens reserves and has to start going through the process of assessments. That's exactly why citizens is referred to as state backed because the citizens of the state are in fact the financial backup. We expend all those funds. Then we have the ability to um, we have that we're required actually to um, to levy surpluses on our policyholders first and then levy assessments on other Florida insurance policyholders. So what exactly does that look like? Well, it starts with citizens policyholders. Every citizens customer has signed this document acknowledging if citizens needs more money to pay claims, customers can be assessed up to 45% of their current premium. If that's not enough, then citizens can assess all homeowners in the state starting with 1 to 2% through their insurance carrier. If that's not enough, they can then assess every insurance policy up to 30% for several years. That includes renters and auto insurance. There's something that we call the hurricane tax in Florida, which is also a surcharge, which means citizens is allowed to put that on every consumer's insurance bill in the state of Florida. If you've lived in Florida for a while now, you may have paid it before. After the very heavy 2004, 2005 season, we had an eight year period where a 1% surcharge was put on insurance bills of consumers. As for the consequences of not paying, do you know what happens if your, your customers can't pay their insurance? They just get dropped? And ultimately, I think we work with our insurance agents. We work with our customers. Um, ultimately, you know, in general, if, if, if premiums aren't paid, at some point, you know, coverage is dropped. So far, only one insurance company has opted into this OIR program. But keep in mind that these surcharges are only what's possible if a big storm or series of storms were to hit. Reporting in Tampa Bay, I'm in-depth reporter Stassi Olmos, ABC Action News.